elaborate on that point for a minute. Well, Warhol stopped stopped um, uh, producing uh, painting and art for the galleries and created a scene that was always listening to the radio or whatever pop images. His factory was like a bunker that soldiers went to from the war of American mixed media life. So he just sat there, people come and stand in front of the camera and stare at the camera or make some ridiculous footage of just whatever they were doing. He was recording the fallout of the wreck of, of American society. And remember, the silver lining of the factory was the silver of space capsules. You, you would see on TV them sitting in a silver little capsule, right? Mm -hmm. So actually Warhol uh, was, was using the silvery effect of the uh, space race as seen on TV as his environment, as the hidden ground, the hidden decor. Mm -hmm. So he was like a halfway house for people dropping back in the chemical body and he was showing how... Are you laughing? Yeah, I think, it's, I think, it's, I think you're right. I think they get it. He got ahead right there. Yeah, and what are they doing? They're sitting around taking so the war the factory was a halfway house for <laughs> the shattering of the American psyche as a result of the televised injection of Vietnam into the homes of every American. Right. And and Warhol was actually trying to point out the hidden ground. He couldn't he didn't have video camera then, but he, he kept filming and tape recording everything because it was the recording process, which was his metaphor for the electronic 24-7 bombardment of a televised environment. And what did he show? He showed people with their body morals, the traditional body values falling apart. They'd be lounging around, sucking each other's dick or, or, or tit and stick, taking drugs, literally dancing to music and the velvet underground would say, play some drone, you know. <laughs> It was a scene from that movie, Apocalypse Now, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. It's some hangout place while people are waiting to go back out in the field. So, um, and his whole position in that is just a passive TV machine recording. He was actually, and that is, if you interpret what Warhol did uh, like that, then he was the most accurate artist in the art context next to McLuhan. McLuhan referred to, when he met with Warhol, he said he was a rude. Yes, because McLuhan, McLuhan knew that Warhol was getting close, and Warhol's foundation down in Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, I can never remember which place Pittsburgh. it is. I've, actually, I've been to the museum. Right, and they, somewhere in there on their website, they say that, that Warhol got his ideas that um, everybody famous for 15 minutes from McLuhan. So he was reading McLuhan, probably because he was an advertising person in the 50s, and McLuhan was known in the advertising world, because he was upsetting the cart by actually reviewing it. So Warhol was heavily influenced by McLuhan. And so what McLuhan writes is, is that what was wrong with pop art, meaning Warhol, was he was advocating merging with the electronic tribal environment. That Warhol did not know how to provide an anti-environment. And what's interesting, McLuhan did provide the anti-environment because he retrieved the book and presented the book in a new way. Whereas Warhol, at best, could only be, as he said, a machine and, and be the, uh, the electronic guy, just recording. He didn't know how to, to write using an obsolete medium like the book and make it in any environment. McLuhan successfully made the, the, uh, the right medium, the book, in any environment to the uh, electronic mishmash. And then McLuhan also had the strategy of, hey, let me run the United Nations and I'll use the computer to do a global thermostat in all the environments around the world. Warhol did not know how to do that and would not say that and didn't think of it. So Warhol's on a B level compared to McLuhan's A, more comprehensive level. You see what I mean? And that's right. why he would call Warhol a rube.